In today's show, let's look ahead to Monday's nine games in the NBA, streaming targets, and Mick Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And make sure you are checking out your favorite show right across. Whatever your favorite sport is, we have a Locked On show for that. Let's look at Monday. The beginning of week three in the NBA. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Blazers and Sixers. First game up. I want to watch um, Yusuf Nurkic. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Yeah, he is... um, Look, he's playing at a high level, right? But what he is, is frustrating us with the low minutes. I don't know if that's going to change. The numbers are great, but I'd like to see him push just a little bit higher um, and play close to those 29 minutes. It doesn't make a huge amount of sense that he is... um, Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make a huge amount of sense to have him at that level. Um, But I I don't know. I I don't know. I I can't fully understand Chauncey Billups's thought process and, and not closing the game with him and having your Nance out there. When you, you do have... Nurkic is a very good center, right? So it just... It doesn't make a huge amount of sense for me to have him at that level. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. He played 29 minutes in the first game. Let's see if that can maybe get back to that at some point. Um, CJ McCollum. He was red hot. We did that top 20 player show the other day and he was right at the top, top 10. It has started to drop off, which is always going to be anticipated. But he is carrying a large load because of the situation with Damian Lillard. And McCullough's playing well. But let's see how he goes. Is he going to just settle back into that 30 to 50 range, 40 to 50 range? Or is he going to be able to push back into the top 20? For the Sixers, I want to watch Shake Milton. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Milton is a guy that has some, I guess, threat to take some of Tyrese Maxey's minutes. So I want to watch to see how Doc Rivers deploys him, how much he plays, how much max he plays. His Milton Milton uh, assists have been up. So is that something that's going to continue as well? I really don't think he's a point guard. But well, I don't think he's a point guard's asshole, to be honest. But he might be out there playing a little bit more, and that's something to watch. While well, I also want to watch Joel Embiid, who has definitely not been peak Joel Embiid. How much is the knee bothering him? How much is he going to play? Can he start to actually produce first-round value? That'd be awesome if he could do that, because that obviously has not been the case so far. The Spurs in the pace is Lonnie Walker. Walker. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Hello. Hello, indeed. He probably will start again with Doug McDermott out, but one big game, one shit game. And he's just not a guy that's consistent enough for me to have him as an absolute must roster to play. In a points league, sure, you can have him for the short term. I just don't think it's worth it in a category league, but I'd like to see him string together some good games here. And then Keldon Johnson, who, again, remains really, really nice with his scoring but not much else. Inefficient, low steals, blocks, assists, rebounds, not great, doesn't hit threes. And it's not great for category leagues. I'd love him to prove me wrong, but at this point, I need him to prove me right rather than be proved wrong, Like if that that makes any sense. He needs to show it rather than me giving him the benefit of the doubt to be a must-roster guy. The Cavs and the Hornets. Now, separating fantasy from reality has always been something that that I try to... um, that I try to do as much as possible on this show. You know, put together, like, this is what I think is happening for fantasy, but it doesn't mean that I, I think this guy's a good player or vice versa. And I've done that with Colin Sexton a lot, right? Is try to go out there and and be, I don't know, um, realistic with what he can do. Like, putting his value in a situation where I go, well, when he's playing, right, there is there is value in what he can bring. But at the moment with Sexton, we are seeing that those real-life deficiencies 
coming to the fore where the Cavs are like, we don't actually need you to go out there and take these shots and play this many minutes because you're not that good. And then when that happens, and that's why I've always said long-term with Sex and I don't, do not buy him dynasty-wise at all because of that long-term deficiency. And we're seeing that. I really want to see how they use him with Rubio and Garland. He's been dreadful. He's not a drop, but it could be going that way because I do not believe in him as a good player long-term. Jarrett Allen, after that really hot start, he has sort of cooled off more into that area I expected him to be. He's going to be low usage at times. He's going to have some big games and some bad games. He's obviously still a rosterable player, but we're seeing him sort of settle into where he needs to be value-wise. For the Hornets, PJ Washington Jr. was perfect from the field on Sunday. I'm more interested to see how the minute split goes between him and Plumlee. 22 minutes isn't really enough to have Washington as a guaranteed must-roster in all circumstances type scenario. He's obviously got higher upside than Plumlee, but if it continues to be like a 27-22 minute split with very little crossover between those two, it really does limit what his overall upside is. While Cody Martin, as I detailed on the waiver wire show earlier today, he's been rostered in tons of leagues. I think we saw today why that is just not a smart move. He played like 15 minutes. Let's see how they use him again, but I imagine it's going to be in a pretty small role as we move forward. The Raptors and the New York Knickerbockers. Let's watch for Scotty Barnes, who is just taking a lot more shots. He's hitting them at a ridiculous rate. Still not taking threes. I want to watch him to see if he can get assists because they're not happening. But can he also maintain this level of aggression, usage, and ability to hit pull-up jumpers? It's been super impressive. While for Precious Achua, he's been the opposite of impressive. I didn't like him in the draft. He had that opportunity early for the Raptors, but we're seeing minutes drop and drop and drop. And I do believe that when Siakam is back, they might actually just go with Siakam over Achua in that starting lineup. And Precious is losing a ton of value. I wouldn't be holding him in 12-teamers. For the Knicks, Rowan Barrett had a career game last time out. Um... So that's, yeah, that's interesting. Will he be able to do that? I don't know. I have significant doubts whether he's going to be able to um, replicate that again. But it was a step in the right direction. And then for Mitchie Robinson, who unfortunately has not been taking it from here. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Um, can we see something? Like he is not encouraging me to be a must-hold 12-team league. I, I think he is a hold for now. But I'd like to see some blocks or some usage or some rebounds or some shit because he's giving us absolutely nothing at this point in time, unfortunately. But I'll tell you what else gives us something. That is Indeed. If you want to build an all-star team, you need the all-star hiring partner. And you need Indeed. Indeed is a hiring partner that gets you what you really want, a short list of quality candidates as fast as possible. Because you can do it all. Attract, interview, and hire all at Indeed. Don't struggle on your own to find quality candidates. Indeed can help you hire the right people right now. Indeed partners with you at every step of the hiring process so you can find talent with the skills you need through tools like Indeed Instant Match assessments and virtual interviews. With Indeed Instant Match, over 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job post, according to Indeed data. Get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Get a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through December 31st. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Now you're watching... Maybe you're watching games here on your TV, live sport. And you've got your shows you watch somewhere else. And then you've got your highlights that you watch on your phone. And then you've got the other login for something else for the premium shows that come later on. Well, there's just too much all over the place. Remotes and devices and all this sort of stuff. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. And it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there is no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can find out more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Uh, compatible device required and content varies by package. Okay. Let's look at the next game. It is rematch. We had this game the other day. The Wizards and the Hawks. Spencer Dinwiddie is performing above expectations at this stage. Um, but does that mean you know, that he's going to be able to continue that? I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned about his shooting dropping off. But let's watch it. Let's also watch Kyle Kuzma, Rui Hachimura. Who knows where he is? Like, Who knows when he's coming back or what the hell's going on with him? He's obviously going through something pretty tough. So you know, we all hope that he's okay. Uh, but Kuzma putting up some okay numbers. Now, 
still, he's not a top 100 player, but he is rebounding really well. He's getting some scoring opportunities and he's playing a shit ton of minutes. Now, I would always be using these as opportunities to sell high on Kuzma, but let's see what he can do. Well, for the Hawks, I'm real close to dropping DeAndre Hunter. In fact, I think I'd do it in certain spots. Can he do anything? He's getting okay minutes, but there's just nothing exciting there. It's really, really disappointing. And then Cam Reddish is the opposite. He's low minutes, but high production. Reddish is an interesting stream if you are looking for points. I wouldn't say he's doing much more than that, but he is playing at a high level. But how those two look in comparison or you know, in conjunction with how Bogdan Bogdanovich looks and the minutes that Bogdan gets, I think he's always going to be a key focus on the Hawks. The Bulls and the Celtics. We know Patrick Williams is out. So Alex Caruso is going to push to 30 plus minutes. I wonder what this means when Kobe White returns. Will they start White instead of Javante Green? I don't think there's enough shots for that, but watch that one. Caruso has value if you are looking for steals. And he's you know, disappointed, I guess, in that first game without Williams, but he's been good otherwise. Well, uh, Nikola Vucevic, where's my thing? It's Vucevic. It's Vucevic. Vucevic. He has not been as good as last year, but... His time in Chicago wasn't as good as his time in Orlando. So it's not that surprising that he's dropped off, but his shots are going to fall at a higher rate than they are. So let's see how he goes in terms of that field goal percentage and where the usage sits with him. Well, for the Celtics, both Al Horford and Marcus Smart are interesting guys to watch here. Horford, because he'll be playing next to Rob Williams again, he's been unbelievable, Al Horford. There are leagues where he's still not rostered, which is crazy. Again, I, I can't stress this enough. Ban the four center limit on ESPN. ESPN, if you're watching, fuck it off. Yahoo, if you're watching, two center minimum, fuck it off. Ridiculous settings across both of your formats. So the amount of people come to me, Josh, Al Horford, I need to add him. I go, what are you doing? Add him. Oh, I've got a four center limit. <laughs> Stupidity. Anyway, Horford's been great, but now Williams is back for this game, so let's see how they interact. Well, Marcus Smart, people are hating on Marcus Smart. He's at like the 80th ranked player shooting 25%. Imagine that goes to 35%. He is a guaranteed must roster player. He's back from his one day illness, so hopefully he's um, you know, firing and maybe shoots better than 25%. That'd be great as well. The Nuggets and the Grizzlies. Aaron Gordon's last few games have been all right. Still don't think he's a guaranteed must roster 12 team league player, but he's playing a little bit better. I'm always wanting to watch Maga Porter because you know, he sucks at the moment, but I believe there's a bit of a, a buy low on him. But Gordon's a very fringe 12 team league player, while the Stiffy Bones Highland is. Well, he looked good last game. But does the doctor, the professor, the associate professor, the mister, which for some reason is a higher title than doctor in the medical world, Michael Malone, does he play him? Does he play him more than 10 minutes? When is he going to see a ramp up that is commensurate with what his role could be on this Nuggets team? Let's watch to see that. Well, the Grizzlies, Steve Adams, three games in a row under 20 minutes. That's shit house. Is this a trend? where they play more Xavier Tillman, where they play Jackson at the five with Anderson at the four. If I get Adams under 10 again, or sorry, under 20 minutes again, I, it's very hard for me to hold. That's a, that's a trend, man. Four games that are under 20 minutes is a trend. And then for Jaron Jackson, people hate him at the moment. Oh my God, this guy's trash. He's garbage. I'm going to drop him. Okay, all right. Don't do something stupid. He's shooting 31%. It's going to go up. But let's watch it. Maybe he's shit again. Buy low before this game though. Always buy low before the game and see what happens. The Magic and the Wolves. Cole Anthony has been really, really good. Really good. Impressive rebounding. Had some good shooting nights. Values there until at least Marco Fultz returns. Let's watch him again. While Chuma Kiki, I'm not convinced that he's a 12-team league guy. Let's see how they use him. Let's see what it means for Franz Wagner and his minutes. Does Akiki just settle into a 17-minute bench roll or does he push towards 30? Well, for the Wolves, Jaden McDaniel is very hard to make a case that he's must roster. I thought that his, the hype on him was too high in the offseason. He's a defensive stats specialist who's not bringing defensive stats. There's just no usage. He's not good enough in many areas. I think he's probably a drop. Well, Patrick Beverly, honestly, is looking like an ad. Good threes, good steals, great assists, even in 23 minutes. There's enough value in Pat to have a look at him as, at the very worst, a 14-team league guy. At the very worst. The Thunder and the Clippers. It's the two blokes who are over rostered, Darius Baisley and Lou Dort. No, my son is also named Bort. Baisley had that one good game and then was terrible again. I expect him to be terrible once more. He's a streamer and that's more for points leagues. Well, Dort, again, he's just really fringe 12 team. Probably must roster 12 team points, but not for category leagues. Well, for the Clippers, Marcus Morris is out again. 
Do we get 30 minutes of Luke Kennard once more? That's two games in a row he's had over 30. Can he do it again? I think he's an interesting add, especially in 14 team as well. Batum should draw another start. I would prefer Kennard over Batum personally with uh, Kennard's scoring and three-point upside. Let's look at some streamers for nine category leagues. Jared Vanderbilt, Danny Green, Kennard and Batum, Anthony Simons with another big scoring game on Sunday, Devin Vassell, Javonte Green, Derek Favors, and Lugens Dort. For deeper leagues, these guys are rostered in under 10%. Batum, Javonte Green, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Patrick Beverly. That is an insanely low number. Furkan Korkmaz, Isaiah Hartenstein, the Stiffy Bones Highland, and Kem Birch. And then if we look at points league streamers, Terrence Mann, Jared Vanderbilt, Franz Wagner, Eric Bledsoe, Darius Baisley, Alex Caruso, Lou Dort, and Derek Favors. Guys, Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Whatever your favorite flavor is, raspberry, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, coconut, mint brownie, salted caramel, cherry lime, lemon almond cheesecake. There's so many good ones out there. Blueberry muffin that they are going to have a flavor that suits you. Just if, you know, if you don't know what your favorite is, just get a mix box. Get them all in there. But they're not just delicious. They're also healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein per bar, 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. And you can get these delicious Built Bars for 15% off. Head to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off Built Bars, the best tasting protein bar ever. Guys, that will do it for us today. I'll be back with a full show later on today. Make sure you're following this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.